Vital Vertebral Mobilization Under Anesthetic, or CVMUA, is a published, reviewed physical therapy used to treat, firstly, loss or reduction of range of movement in cervicovertebral joints or neck stiffness, and secondly, associated neuropathic pain, which is more often manifest as a change in response to touch, pressure, and or temperature. This response is usually heightened and referred to as hyperesthesia. With cervical neuropathic pain, the areas of referral can be the pole, neck musculature in general, shoulders, girth, wither, under saddle, and importantly, the sensitive tissue of the forefeet. Firstly, before showing you the treatment, um, we need to consider the horse's back or spine and the relevant facts. First fact is that, as I'm told by some very elite equestrian riders, the spine or its ability to move becomes responsible for up to 95% of the horse's performance, whether in dressage or show jumping. Now, if we remember that, and now if we look at the spine itself in this particular species of animal, a lot of the lower spine has a fairly limited range of movement. There's certainly a reasonable amount through the lower back, but 90% approximately of the horse's spinal range of movement occurs within this region here, which is a cervical region, which consists of eight joints. Now, if we look at this region of the spine, the neck or cervical region, again, the top third is certainly amenable to treatment or mobilizing or moving in the standing animal. But unfortunately, the lower part of the neck, if there's significant loss of range or stiffness, then it is extremely difficult to mobilize that without the aid of anesthesia. Having said that, this form of treatment is a conjunctive treatment. Now, if you've just purchased a horse for equestrian work, one of your major concerns is its range of movement, abil ability to move left, right, to flex. If after a few weeks of riding you find that there is a severe limit to left or right or to collection that could take six months to several years to acquire, that's if you are able to, then it would make sense to con at least consider physically mobilizing that prior to spending all your time, money and effort given that you're probably better working with an animal that feels it can cooperate with you rather than one that feels it can't. So a CVMUA, given that, can be a conjunctive treatment, i.e. conjunctive with what is the major part of equestrian training, which is to relax your horse and stretch, which of course you do mostly under saddle. So the same thing can be done, obviously, more directly with the use of anesthesia. In addition, of course, this form of treatment can be conjunctive with other forms of therapy such as acupuncture, chiropractic, massage, etc. In fact, I've had many people say they would prefer to first establish as far as possible full range of movement of the spine and then where particular areas are of a concern using adjunctive or conjunctive treatments such as those I've just mentioned. The last point I guess I often get this is all but how safe is this? Well all I can tell you is I have anaesthetized and treated over 5,000 horses in many countries around the world and they have all stood up and walked away. The horse has now been sedated ready for to be anaesthetized um, 
what we are going to try and accomplish once he's under anaesthetic is to ensure that the eight joints which make up his cervical spine or neck are able to move through normal range without any restriction. The theory is right, if we can accomplish that then all of this rather awkward and abhorrent behaviour should uh, subside, uh, which will not be in two days time but over the next weeks and hopefully he'll become a lot more tractable animal and once that occurs that should be maintained full time so it will be a permanent change not a temporary one. Okay, now that the horse is anaesthetized, we are simply going to take these joints through what would be regarded as normal range. The first movement which I'll do is basically dorsal or flexion or extension of the joints, for which I will use my knees as a cradle. looks a little bit awkward and basically we're stretching and rotating those joints. Okay. Just move a little bit further down the spine, knees as a cradle, stretching. It's a controlled movement. Okay. Okay, now we're just going to start taking the neck over. When we get to this point, what is very apparent is we can see the neck is straight to here and it's bending from here. This should be a continual curve. The spine is actually further down, but it's a good reflection of range. Also, the muzzle is reaching a position about here. That's where his range is now. So it's this in this region that we want to now try and acquire more range. So. therapy or the treatment is based on applying enough pressure such that the joint complexes begin to move through that range that the horse hasn't been using. In this horse case it's not taking a lot of pressure. To do that in the case of older horses where the range has been lost for up to six or seven years, it can take substantially longer to acquire this range. So, we basically maintain pressure until the movement stops, then we stop. So if we just, now we're gonna change head and neck position. So joints sit in a different position again. You can probably see here it's now flexing from a point much lower down the spine already. So again I'm basically driving back in this direction and compressing those joints and at the same time opening up the lateral surfaces or the outside surface. Again these joint complexes are moving very nicely under me point they stop, again we'll stop, you tend to get a little bit more movement each time the horse exhales, which is normal because it's more relaxed when it exhales. Right, so this is the last position, um, people have referred to this sort of treatment as being dangerous, well I'm sure it's not, in fact you have more control of this animal in this position than you do with a standing animal. Skill, of course, is in practice. Okay, relax. Um, so, I'll just get one of you can just take the, take the head across here just to demo. So, now 
Now you can see this curving from here. That was our range. We just take the muzzle across. That's our range now. So very simply acquiring a normal horse will get to the end of the ribcage. Firing normal range, we're happy with that. Now we need to repeat the dose from the other side. So again, if we look at this side now, we can see movement is actually from here. So all this part of the neck is quite supple. This part's a bit like a post. So again, we want to acquire that range. And I think it's reasonable to see, particularly when you're dealing with the lower neck, the importance of having this horse in a position where you can apply pressure without it objecting. If you just think about this horse's debut prior to anesthesia, I think I'd challenge anyone to uh, attempt treating it. Okay, right. Um. So again, we're doing the three movements in reverse this time. And again, these joints are moving through range rather well. So the amount of pressure and time taken to mobilize these joints reflects the seriousness of the injury and the length of time it's been set in that position, obviously. Most of what I'm using here, quite simply, is my weight, which in this horse is enough to mobilize the joints. Okay, relax. Okay, do you want to keep on this? Take that over here. Just a little bit. Okay, so again, do we have the horse post treatment? I think it's quite high any pressure. You can see we now have. And with length of range, pretty close to full range of movement. A little, a little uh, suppling under saddle, which we often like done in conjunction. So some lateral relax and stretch work would put this horse in the position where he would have full range. So for whatever purpose he's required, he's both going to be able to and he's going to be happy to. To quote an accomplished equestrian, 95% of my horse's performance is related to its spinal mobility. Approximately 90% of this spinal movement is through the neck. Therefore, the more places my horse can comfortably take its head and neck, the better it will perform for me. And if I am going to spend a considerable amount of money and time on my newly acquired equine athlete, then why would I not firstly try to ensure maximal spinal range of movement, particularly in the region of the neck? For more information on this form of therapy, please go to drtomahern.com.